10.30 in the morning. Outside temps are 26 degrees currently with like a wind chill of 18. About a thousand square foot ranch with a full basement. Upstairs temps are 64 currently. Downstairs 74. No duct work. We leave the basement door open and there's one vent cut in the floor in one of the rooms. DS Anthromax 15, it's the middle one. That's what it looks like currently. Hard to tell in the video, but it's fairly ashy. I shook this last night. It's been at least 12 hours since tending it. My ash pan is pretty full, so I'm going to empty that first. I carry that outside. I don't shovel it inside for uh, the dust. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back. So the ash pan just slides right out. Like I said, I did this last night and, and I made sure it's spread out and I'm going to carry that outside now. There's a look inside. Sometimes it spills out in the sides here. So I just scoop that out and put it in the pan, which I did last night. Go carry it outside. Alright, ash pan's empty. Slide it back in. And close the door. I have a kneeling pad I use for reference point. There's the temp of the stove. What is that? About 200 degrees on the pipe going up and out. I'll do. Set the camera down here. Hopefully that'll capture it well. I'll shake it. As I'm shaking it, you'll see those flames get a little more orange. And you'll start seeing some more of the uh, coals falling out of the hopper as it's falling down. kind of watch the coals are dancing up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm not going super far, just back and forth. So I do that for a bit. I'll open the door slowly. When you open the door, more air is coming in. The flames get higher. And actually, I will... Uh, I look in there as the ash is falling. Kind of defeats the purpose of having an external handle, because now I have this open for dust to get into the air. But, you know, now I know I'm not over or under shaking it. And I start to see some orange falling, so. Once I start seeing some orange fall, I'll stop. What I'll do now, let's get that out of the way. I have this poker. Notice the fire is a lot more darker in there. You, know, you don't see that orange glow. We have a lot of new cold on top now. Open this door. Poke down. You know it's ashy if you still feel like it's cooking through sand versus cooking through like gravel. So, do a couple around the front, around the sides. The sides will get a lot more ashy, I believe. Just cook down through. Now the hopper is empty. I can see cell spread. Some of these coals out to the sides, so the sides are built up really deep. Mm -hmm. Close the door. And just with doing that, you'll see a lot more flames coming up because you've just opened up some more air to flow up through it. 
So I'll go back to the bottom and I'll shake it a bit more until I start seeing some more uh, hot ash falling. Which I'm starting to see now. I'm not sure if the camera picks up on that. So that's about where I'll stop. At this point we're done in there, done in there. I leave that handle right about there. It's two-thirds. Uh, they say you need some over air for when the new coal is lighting up the gases. All right, I'll move my little kettle. Put that on the ground over here. Open up this. There's the hopper. So that hopper comes out if you want to have a wood fire so you can fit your wood in there. So I open that. So I buy the coal in bulk, there's a place half hour away, I get a ton in a truck bed and I bought 50 buckets or so from Home Depot with lids, it was, you know, if you do the math, it pays for itself versus the price of bag coal. So dump it in and, I, and that place offers oiling, I got it oiled this past time, I might only get the half amount next time. They had full rate, one gallon per ton, half rate half gallon per ton keep the dust down so when that oil burns off when you first pour it in you can hear it sizzling and it's shiny so that puts off a little bit of smell so I always close this door first latch it I think I paid like 220 225 for a ton last year I had a lot of coal given to us actually from someone who doesn't burn coal anymore so we're on day 94 I believe of continuous burn. Haven't touched the electric heat at all, the baseboards. We've probably burned through a ton and a half so far. Top off that kettle. Help with moisture in the air. Now look at it. It's very dark in there. It's very black. You can hear it sizzling. Small little flames. There are some blue flames you're probably not going to pick up on camera. This does have that afterburn, waste burn system. Up above there's, uh, let me open it again. There's little holes on those stainless steel pieces. More efficient. But, uh, you know, it looks like it's dead from the top, but there's a coal fire burning. You know, that's eight, ten inches deep, you know. It's burning underneath. That new stuff will light up and I'll come back to this in 12 more hours, 10 more hours, whatever, you know, whenever I get back home. So that's that. The empty buckets I bring back outside, stack them up. I always keep a few in the basement, and uh, I'll bring them in a couple at a time as needed. Soon, in the next couple weeks, I'll have to go get another load. But uh, I'm not splitting, stacking, seasoning wood. No splinters and wood, you know, chunks around, no kindling, no restarting the fire every single day. Stable heat, you know, constant temperature versus getting that wood fire up going, coming up, dying back down overnight, getting cold. This has a thermostat here. It's a bimetallic piece of metal in there. Currently it's set to what's that? a little over three and a half. Had the chain. It goes down to this flapper, which will control the air from the bottom coming up below the coals. And it's closed, like, like, you know, see it? So, now that it's kind of smothered a bit with the new coals on top, the stove's going to cool down a bit, which causes the thermostat to open back up, and it'll pull this up a little bit to regulate more air into it to bring it back up to the temperature it needs. And then it'll just, uh 
maintain somewhere in there, you know, just kind of fluctuates with the temperature based on that thermostat. And self controls the air versus a, a spinner knob or a, you know, mechanical lever that's set and that's it. This one will, will adjust to keep it at the same temperature. So that's that. This one has the tubes that go all the way down through the stove to the bottom. Helps with heat transfer. And that's about it on this one. We have a uh, humidity gauge as well. Seventy-four degrees, twenty-four percent humidity. So that's that. Hopefully, this uh, video helps someone.